Denver Broncos head coach Sean Payton says that it is realistic that the team trades up from 12th overall potentially maybe into the top five. We'll take a look at what that may look like for the Denver Broncos on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome into a brand new episode, Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you to all the everydayers out there in Broncos country. Thanks for making us your first listen of the day every single day. Just a reminder, you can get Locked On Broncos for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. So do us a favor, make sure you hit that subscribe to that follow button so you never miss out on what's going on with your favorite team every single day, all year long, because for the true fan, there is never an off-season. I'm Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter for Mile High Sports, joined by Sarah Bettinger, site expert at PredominantlyOrange.com. Today's episode of the show is brought to you by GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Sarah, my friend, a lot of buzz at the NFL annual owners meeting, the AFC coaches breakfast. We got to hear from Broncos head coach Sean Payton. He gave some insight. He was asked a lot of questions. Some of the questions that we had, I think everybody in Broncos country had about maybe their plan a little bit. Or on top of that, could they maybe trade up from 12th overall? And that's really where the buzz is here on today's episode of the show because John Payton says that's a very realistic option here for this team. He did, and that's kind of been the discussion, right, is that it hasn't been realistic because while the Broncos have the 12th overall pick and there's teams in front of them that have, you know, quarterback needs, and so – Without that second round draft choice here in 2024, a lot of people have kind of dismissed the idea that the Broncos could trade up because does it really make sense to deal that 2025 first round pick? If you're talking about moving up into that that top five range where if there's a run on quarterbacks, that's maybe where you'll have to get to. So I found it very interesting, Cody, that Sean Payton, is he's kind of trying to dictate the narrative a little bit more. It's not like the Broncos are dead in the water. They're not fish in a barrel here. They are able to trade up if they want to do so, and they could get creative with it. And, you know, it, it helps uh, who you know in today's NFL, yeah. right? I did some digging, <laughs> Cody, on uh, uh, he, he specifically name dropped Arizona Cardinals GM Monty Ossenfort there and, and kind of also casually noted that they're on a first name basis. There's a lengthy history, a very lengthy history of the Saints and New England Patriots, both of the, the two former teams that Sean Payton, formerly with the Saints, Monty Austin Fort came up in the NFL with the New England Patriots. A lot of trade history between those two teams. Now, I'm not suggesting that those two guys have been on the phone over the years all the time, but they are clearly on a first name basis. And you could look at the the Brandon Cooks trade, Cody. The the Saints acquired a first round pick from the Patriots in 2011. Akeem Hicks trade, multiple in draft trades, five trades between those two teams from 2015 to 2017, and then a number of other transactions outside of that. So if you're looking to add some more fuel to the fire, the fact that Peyton name dropped Monty Austin Fort, whose Cardinals hold the fourth overall pick, that could end up being very notable. Well, when you look at that as well, I think another thing Sean said, it's hard to predict who's going to be available if you do look to trade up, right? Like, I think we all know, we all at least believe that at the first overall pick, Caleb Williams will more than likely go to the Chicago Bears. The commanders, they're at the second pick overall. I think there's a lot of discussion as to who they're going to go with. Is it going to be a Drake May? Is it going to be a Jaden Daniels? Is it going to be a Bo Nix, Michael Penix Jr.? Like, we don't know yet who that domino is going to be. And then who's going to go at number three? Like, I, I think you look at the draft order and all these teams that need a quarterback, there's a lot of smoke screen. There's a lot of questions. There's teams behind Denver that are looking to trade up potentially even the Las Vegas Raiders. You're looking at the, obviously, the Minnesota Vikings. They're looking to potentially trade up and get a quarterback. So I'm very, very curious here as to what happens with the Broncos being in the position of picking 12th overall as is. And maybe what other teams can maybe call an offer if Arizona is, in fact, looking to maybe make a trade. Because, look, he, he has been on the record. Monty has out there in Arizona of saying that, hey, we're open. Like, that sign's on. It's not flashing. It's open. Which, is it really open? I mean, smokescreen season is running rampant around here. But it opens up an opportunity, right? So now I wanted to maybe throw this out here as well because Sean also mentioned something about there's going to be competition at the wide receiver position here for Denver. And it got me to thinking, okay, well, if Denver is looking maybe to potentially trade up from 12th overall, if it's very realistic for them, as Sean Payton says that it is, 
could Denver maybe include Cortland Sutton or Garrett Bowles in one of those trades? Plus, obviously, maybe swapping with the 12th overall pick, maybe even a late round pick next year to move up. I don't know if you necessarily swap this year's first and then give away a first for next year to be able to do that. But if you are getting the quarterback that you want, I think it's a valuable risk to maybe take. And Denver, I think, has been okay as long as they still have a second rounder next year. That I think that'll be a very big key for them. But could maybe Denver include Cortland Sutton or Garrett Bowles plus a pick swap in the trade to maybe move up to fourth overall? I think it's anything is possible, Cody. When you talk about moving up for a quarterback, I just I think everything is on the table. And I mean, this may be a hot take, but I know the Broncos want to extend him, but maybe Pat Sertan as well, depending on how convicted you are about a quarterback. I mean, it's it's it it could be. I mean, it, it could end up being that's what the price is to get him. I don't think that's gonna happen, but I don't know how how valuable are Cortland Sutton and Garrett Bowles to in a trade up scenario to get into the top five of the draft. You you almost wonder if teams would rather have the draft capital assets and those types of things. So it's 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 tough position for them to be in, but they could get creative. I mean, and in all reality, when we're talking about that 2025 first round pick, nobody's really talking about next year's draft class at the quarterback position no. as though it's going to be something big. So like, well, I've been on the train of saying, Hey, I, I don't think the Broncos should trade that 2025 first round pick because the way things are right now, maybe it could be a high selection, Maybe that pick is on the table, Cody. I mean, uh, we've talked about players. I think that 2025 first round pick, people kind of assume, well, the Broncos aren't going to trade that because they're going to be bad this year. If they have a quarterback that they want, folks, I mean, that's on the table. Let's just be honest about it. Yeah. That pick is on the table because next year's class, you are looking ahead to that. I know we've talked about how Sean Payton barely knew the, the names of the guys who were in this year's draft just a month ago at the Combine, but Look, there's people that he's hired who know about those quarterbacks next year. And George Payton knows about them. Cody Rager knows about them. Your scouting department knows about them. They can give you a forecast and say, we need to get a guy this year because otherwise we're going to be waiting until 2026. Maybe it's not so important for the Broncos to have that 2025 first round pick if it means getting one of the, what Sean Payton said, maybe two guys that work out in this year's class. When it doesn't seem like Sean Payton is going to wait around and hope that a quarterback just falls into his lap. If he likes a guy, the vibe right now seems to suggest that he's going to go out there and be ultra aggressive in getting that guy because Sean's got four years on his contract and they want to win. He wants to win now. And so far, the moves that they've made this offseason, they want to build around that. Now, that kind of leads us to our next point here on today's episode, Locked on Broncos. Sean Payton seems to suggest that the team is not rebuilding. We'll take a look at maybe why he thinks that. We'll look at the pros and cons of that here on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. Today's Locked on Broncos podcast is brought to you by our friends over there at the Game Time app. And if you've ever had a frustrating ticket buying experience where you go to get a deal last minute on an event that's going on near you and you initially forgot to purchase your tickets, you go there, you pull up the app, and all of a sudden you go to purchase your tickets, but they're super expensive or they're sold out. This is where game time comes in handy because they have deals on last minute seats. You get to see the view from your seats overall, and they have special deals that allow you to get the best overall discount and price to purchase tickets on events going on near you, whether it's a sporting event, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. Game time is the place to be. Game time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect. When you arrive, they have all-in prices which show you your total up front so you know that you're getting a great deal before you even check out, and you can buy tickets in seconds with two taps. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDON for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code LOCKEDON for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. There's no rebuilding going on in Denver. It's regrouping. You got to get ready to play. Sean Payton dismissed the idea that the Broncos are rebuilding. And Cody and I are going to break that down on today's episode of Locked on Broncos. But we want to say thank you to every single one of you that makes Locked on Broncos your first listen of the day every single day. And hey, if you work remote like me, I know a lot of you out there, you're watching Fox Sports, ESPN, NFL Network on TV all day, but sometimes you got to turn the volume off with all that shouting and the arguing. Today's the day to make the switch to Locked On Sports. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel 
programmed for you every single day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, and it's streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, and it's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Cody, Sean Payton, he's he ain't rebuilding. The Broncos aren't <laughs> rebuilding, guys. Remember under John Elway, it was, you know, uh, what did he say? Reloading, okay? Now here with Sean Payton, we're regrouping. We know that NFL head coaches, general managers, there's a level of ego there. But I think you and I are both kind of in agreement that Sean Payton really does raise the floor of this team a substantial way. When when you talk about rebuilding this Broncos roster, I don't think that necessarily means a team is automatically going to be bad. Let's break down some of what Sean Payton had to say at the annual NFL League meeting, kind of being dismissive of the idea that this team is in rebuild mode. Yeah, and I think we always have to try to figure out what is the definition of rebuild and all the other things like the retool, reload, reevaluate. Now Sean Payton saying the regroup part. There's a lot of re's that are going on in terms of Wimby where the Broncos are at. But I, I mean, I also kind of feel like Denver is in a little bit of a mini rebuild, right? Because when you look at where you're at as a team, we know that there's been a lot of changes, right? But when you're moving on from veteran players like Justin Simmons, and obviously you're parting ways, you're cutting costs with Russell Wilson, and you're maybe looking at bringing some guys back on one-year deals. You're not being big spenders in NFL free agency, but you do have a lot of young players on your roster. I do feel like that is a little bit of a rebuild, but then it goes back to the notion when we heard from Sean at Super Bowl Radio Row talking with Kay Adams. He says every year, every offseason, it's like a chessboard. You got to flip the board over, and then you got to reassemble the pieces there okay, well, now Denver's pieces look very different. No clear direction right now on who the quarterback is going to be or what that's going to look like. We'll dive deeper on tomorrow's episode of Lockdown Broncos, a little bit more in depth there. But then also at the same time, you have a bunch of guys, like including some of your top players that are on one-year contracts. Like Denver's going to have a ton of free agents next year. They're in a position right now where it's like, all right, well, if you're not rebuilding, what are you doing? And can this team make a run here in 2024? Sarah, I'll say this. I don't know if there's a lot of confidence right now in the eyes of the fan base that this team is going to make a run or be, you know, deeply competitive next season, which is a fair thought. And I think fair evaluation considering where the team has been for the last eight years, but Denver's in a very, very unique position, right? Where I feel like they could surprise people this season, but yeah, I still think that they are in a little bit of a mini rebuild. I do too. I really feel that way because the, like you said, the state of the roster currently, the the names that you've gotten rid of this offseason, Russell Wilson, Justin Simmons, you trade away Jerry Judy. You, you haven't re-signed guys like Josie Jewell. I mean, you're replacing a lot of starters, including at the most important position on the team where you're moving forward with somebody that's going to be new. I know Jarrett Stidham did play a couple of games last year, but even if he is the full-time starter, Cody, it's going to be replacing, you know, your your most important position from last season. So I do view the Broncos as rebuilding. Now, How? what does that mean in their context? I think you look, like you said, you look ahead to next offseason where you've got over $100 million in cap space. I think the Broncos will be utilizing this year to prove that they're still on the upswing. Like when you think of rebuilding, I think of tearing things down. It's going to get worse before it gets better. You know, you're, you're kind of gutting things. You're, you're getting down to the bare bones. You want to get back to the foundation and say, OK, like, let's let's see what we got here. And things might get worse before they get better. I don't know that necessarily the Broncos are planning on things getting so much worse before they get better, right? I think they want to be able to to say to 2025 free agents, like, look at the trajectory that we were on. You know, we won eight games in 2024, and this is what we did in 2020 or 2023. This is what we did in 2024 with all these new pieces in place. Like, come and be part of this because we're on the cusp of something really great here. The, the 2024 season has to be the best recruiting pitch that the Broncos have in 2025 free agency. They can't they can't go out there and look like they're, you know, fish out of water, things like that. They have to be able to say, like, this is something that you as a free agent, you want to come and, and, you know, build the next part of your NFL career here. We have something that we're building. We're doing something special. We're going to take down the Chiefs. We're going to start competing better in the AFC West. If you want guys in free agency to be part of that man, it's going to take more than just throwing a bunch of, you know, millions of dollars at them. Yeah, no, it's going to be a huge selling point. And look, I want to go back to something that Sean had said last season, one of the press conferences that we had with him, and, and it's kind of stuck with me a little bit. And we talk about the the term vision, right? 
There's a vision for every player on this roster. Now, while Denver's had a lot of roster turnover, there's been guys that obviously have been a key part of this team that are you know going to be elsewhere in 2024. There are a lot of young guys on this roster that I was talking about earlier, but Sean had said something as well. Even last year, he said that, you know, there's a vision for the guys that are on this team. There's a vision for the players on this roster, not only for this year, but for next year when he's referencing 2024. So part of me is truly wondering here, like, what is that vision for some of these other guys here? And what does that include in terms of how Denver plans to build, you know, the defense and transition to getting the offense to be at a better point where they can actually put up points, which they really haven't been able to do since 2014. And even then, like, that's how far removed we have been from seeing a Broncos offense be competitive, to be able to score points. And that's the biggest area that has held them back because the defense in that time, while the defense has had moments where they've been awful and including last year, Denver's defense has probably been the brightest part of their team in the last eight years, which I mean, it's kind of sad to say. And now you're at a position where you bring in an offensive minded head coach who wants to have things done a particular way. Part of me is wondering, okay, well, these new guys, obviously that are now coming in, they were signed as free agents. How do they fit into that vision? There's some level of familiarity that Sean has, and there's a reason why they pinpointed them in free agency. And then you already have the guys that have been on the roster that already know what Sean wants, know the vision, and knows how Sean wants to do it. Therefore, you create an environment where guys that are new can just come in, and because you have guys, a wide variety of them, that know this already, it'll be easier for them to adapt into the system. In theory, that's how I see it, but will that mesh with some of the other guys, I think is a great question. Yeah, I think that you br you raise a really great point there, Cody. And I think to your point there, I kind of go towards this idea of kind of mixing, you know, leadership styles on the team, right? You had previously Justin Simmons, who has been around since 2016, was part of the no fly zone there for a bit, kind of the the coattails of that Super Bowl 50 team. And then you had Russell Wilson coming in via trade, who was like, he's his own type of guy, came from Seattle Seahawks, where you have all these different voices in the locker room. It's tough for it's tough for players, and at least from from my experience in leading, you know, at different areas. Like it would be tough for players to just come in and be like, "All right, who who are we following here? Who who's yeah. the?" I love Justin. I like what he's saying. Like he he's a guy that I would want to follow as a peer, as a mentor. But also, we got Sean Payton over here, and he's our head coach. And it's like, well, we all got to kind of fall in line but there's the previous regime and then there's Russell Wilson who's like he's supposed to be the quarterback of the team and there's kind of you know mixed messages being sent out at least from our vantage point to the media between Russ and Peyton and their leadership and things like that so it, it does help to I think have a clean slate we've discussed this before but remember the disconnect between the Super Bowl 50 defense which was largely intact after the Super Bowl and the offense that was revamped after the fact like the Super Bowl 50 defense was not shy about publicly calling out the offense for not doing their part on game days. It's, they're, they're like, we're doing our part. The offense has to pick it up. That difference in the locker room, whether it's deliberate, whether it's blatant, things like that, those types of things can make it hard for you to really build culture in an NFL lock. At least I would, I would, I would venture to guess it would make it very difficult to build culture in an NFL locker room, Cody. So I think it's important to have guys, like you said, that, you have a clean slate. You have guys that know how Sean Payton likes things to be done. Now he's really starting to get, you know, build things his way. The previous, it's almost all completely gone at this point. Well, and as we take a look at what Denver has done in free agency, they have made some moves. They've brought in some new faces to join the roster, but they still may not be done. According to Broncos head coach Sean Payton, we'll take a look at maybe what positions the Broncos could still look at here in free agency that maybe he's alluded to here this week on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. Today's Lockdown Broncos podcast is brought to you by our friends over there at FanDuel Sportsbook. And as you all know, FanDuel is America's number one sportsbook. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament. Now, as the tournament winds down, dwindles down, even if your bracket is busted, you can still win by getting involved on FanDuel as the games start getting down. You start getting closer to the national championship game. The stakes are a little bit higher. And whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book because right now, new customers, they get 200 bucks in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all on FanDuel. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Once again, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. 
are the Denver Broncos done in NFL free agency? Broncos head coach Sean Payton seems to suggest that they could still be making a couple of moves this week. Thank you so much, Broncos country, for tuning in to another episode of Lockdown Broncos on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. A special shout out to all the everydayers out there. Thanks for making the show exactly what it is. As we continue on on today's episode of the show, I felt like Sean gave us some great insight at the NFL annual owners meeting, talking about maybe the things that they have done from a free agency standpoint. That's something we'll address a little bit further on here this week. But he said that the Broncos, they're still not necessarily done in free agency. Sean said that he and George Payton, they're talking this week about a few free agents that are still out there that are still available. So Sarah, if that is the case, what do the Broncos have to work with from a salary cap standpoint and maybe what positions could they look to target? Yeah, they've got around 20 million in available cap space. And we know, Cody, that there's an allocation that goes to this year's NFL draft class. And while that is over 10 million on paper against the top 51, I did confirm this with over the cap, Cody. It does only count 3.9 against 3.9 million against this year's salary cap. So the Broncos are still working with at least 16, 17 million in effective cap space, which means that they can go out there and they can continue to do what they've been doing. Sign guys to one to two year deals that are relatively inexpensive on this year's salary cap. And there's positions out there. You and I have talked about this. The defensive line, that's an area that I would love to see the Broncos continually get stronger. Now, whether that comes via free agency or the NFL draft, that's going to be dependent on the fit. We've seen defensive linemen flying off the board. You and I have discussed this idea of cornerback. And especially lately, the Broncos, they, they apparently missed out on Christian Fulton, who was a former second-round pick of the Tennessee Titans. He went and signed with the rival Los Angeles Chargers instead. So maybe that cornerback position where George Payton has said the Broncos will add this offseason, maybe cornerback is that next spot that we'll see the Broncos go for free agency. Well, let's maybe take a look at a player who could be available. And look, I, I this could be a low-risk, high-reward type of situation. But you look at Xavier Howard, right, who at one point was one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL alongside Tredavious Wyatt, I think, a few years ago, Jalen Ramsey in that conversation. You look at Denver's cornerback room right now, okay, there's Patrick Sertan. You're not necessarily worried about him. But you have young guys in Damari Mathis. You have young guys in Riley Moss, guys who are relatively unproven, right? And you need to have a really good cornerback, too. Now, I think Denver's nickel corner, obviously, as we know, Jaquan McMillan, he was one of the top studs in terms of coverage, snaps, and obviously completion percentage allowed against him, passer rating when targeted. He was one of the top nickel corners in all of football last season. You're pretty good in that position, which I feel like that is an area you need security. But on the other outside part, that's where I have questions about Denver. Like, is George Payton, is Sean Payton, are they confident in Damari Mathis and Riley Moss? Or do they want a veteran to come into the mix or a guy who's at least gotten a lot of starts so far in the NFL to come in in the event that those guys can't, you know, really determine or solidify themselves as a true starter? David Howard was recently on the record of saying that he is willing to take a pay cut, which a lot of Miami Dolphins fans kind of came out and said, wait a minute, the Dolphins asked you to take a pay cut and you weren't willing to do that. What's going on here? Well, I think when you find out when you hit free agency, when your market dries up, you have to take whatever you can get at this point, right? We're seeing it with safeties. Now we're seeing it with some cornerbacks here. Maybe Xavier Howard could be one of those guys that could come to the Broncos, I think would mesh well with what Vance Joseph wants to do, where to be honest with you, Sarah, I feel like we didn't see enough press coverage from the cornerbacks this up past season, really, on the outside. We saw it in the slot. We didn't see it on the outside with Sertan. We saw a lot of off-ball coverage. So now you have two guys that can play press man-to-man. -man. That allows Vance Joseph, if you have an improved defensive line, if your edge rushers can get to the quarterback, you can lock up and play a lot of man coverage and send the house after opposing quarterbacks, which, in my opinion, that could be something that the Broncos maybe look at. It very well could be, Cody, an interesting connection that you just mentioned there with Vance Joseph, who was the defensive coordinator with the Miami mm -hmm. Dolphins when one Xavier Howard was selected with a second round draft choice in 2016. So the ties that bind, right? I know Xavier has been pretty clear about he, he said, I want to play for a contender or, or, you know, those types of things out there. But look. Hey, if you're confident in your abilities, man, maybe you make somebody a contender. Maybe you make a team like the Broncos a contender. Who knows? And, and who knows what could come of a one-year deal for a player like him in Denver, Cody? I mean, it could end up being that he ends up getting a big money deal out of it. So I think there's I think there's something that could be there with the connection, the ties that bind. And, and there's a lot of free agents available. Like you mentioned, the safety market has been rather 
uneventful for the players side of things. I think that, you know, Justin Simmons, he's still out there. I think that every day that passes, you kind of wonder like, or maybe just hold out a little bit of false hope. Like, is there a chance that Justin Simmons could come back? Like, let me hang my Jersey back up behind me, you know, that type of thing. But I, I think that that's, that would be fun to see. Like the Broncos, they might as well, right? We knew they weren't going to be in the first wave of free agency, but why not jump in now that these guys are, maybe they didn't quite, expectations haven't quite been met, you know, and you have the opportunity to say, all right, let's come back on a one-year deal. Uh, we saw a reunion between, I know this isn't the exact same situation. I'm, I'm, I know I may be comparing apples to oranges here, but we saw that the Philadelphia Eagles realized they were worse off without uh, CJ Gardner Johnson, right? They let him go to free agency, let him sign a pretty team-friendly deal with Detroit. And I think CJ realized, man, he was better off with Philadelphia as well. So, Maybe there's a situation where Justin Simmons sees that with the Broncos. I, I don't know. I, I think we'll see. But defensive backs, you can never have too many. Defensive line, you can never have too many. We've seen the Broncos be active uh, at the linebacker position, bringing back you know Jonas Griffith, Justin Cernod, signing Cody Barton. You think there's a chance maybe they could go with that position as well? I think there's a possibility, right? And you look at two veteran options, and the reason I feel like, and I pinpointed inside linebackers being one, obviously they've had some NFL draft meetings and they've been to some you know, pro days. They've interviewed some linebackers. Uh, obviously at the NFL draft level, they're going to be you know eligible this year. But another thing that stood out to me is Sean said, like the positions that are really harder to evaluate in today's game really is inside linebackers being one of them. Quarterback is one of them. Offensive tackle is one of them. He said linebackers are also one of them. So that maybe make, you know, makes me think like, okay, could Denver maybe look at getting another veteran here? Like you look at the market, it's dried up. There aren't guys out there like Patrick Queen that are available, but you have guys that are kind of reclamation projects in a sense. And I, and I don't want this to come across as offensive, but like Shaq Leonard, right? As many people know, some people don't remember, like don't know that he, his name is Shaq, but he used to go by Darius Leonard, right? For the Colts. He's available. He's a free agent. Quan Alexander, a guy who's still not even 30 years old yet in the National Football League, is still available, has former ties, obviously, to Sean Payton in New Orleans. Could they bring in a veteran guy there to really kind of solidify themselves as a true starting Mike backer next to Alex Singleton? Whereas we have questions, is Cody Barton really a starting Mike linebacker next to Alex Singleton? Could Justin Sternod or Drew Sanders make the move back to that position or Jonas Griffith? I don't know. I feel like there's still a lot of question marks regarding that there a guy like Shaq Leonard a guy like Quan Alexander could still be explored and maybe the Broncos are looking into those two names as a possibility and look Broncos country we want to hear from you as the Broncos are set to make a couple more NFL free agency moves this upcoming week what positions are you looking at and overall what do you think about the Broncos chances of moving up from 12th maybe into the top five in this year's NFL draft make sure you let us know if you're watching or listening to Lockdown Broncos wherever you get your podcasts or Available on YouTube. Sarah and myself will be back tomorrow for a brand new episode of the show. We're going to be diving deep into quarterback. Sean Payton shed some insight into his thoughts on Jarrett Stidham. Is he a starting quarterback in the NFL? And will he be handed the job? That's up for debate on tomorrow's brand new episode. Locked on Broncos.